Hey, I'm Cassidy Pope, and I'm with Sound Exchange, and this is Sound Advice. I'm Cassidy Pope, and the kind of music I'm making is pop punk. Um, I came from that world. I did country for a few years, and now I'm back in, in doing rock music. What inspired that like shift along the journey to go back to kind of I guess the origin of, of the punk world? What was the, yeah. the motivation? There were a few things, and it was it was pretty gradual. Um, I think what started it for me was I made a pop punk country record that just didn't do as well as I wanted it to, and it kind of made me realize that maybe the reason is because I'm supposed to just like do one thing and maybe do it really well. So uh, I started to also listen to less and less country music. Um, it didn't feel like it was really in my bones anymore. I grew up singing country music, but like in my formative, you know, teenage years, I was all rock and I loved Avril Lavigne and Blink-182 and stuff. So like when I really think about what makes me tick, it's rock music. Mm -hmm. So it was just like an easy decision. And, uh, the, the transition back to it has been so seamless. It's mm -hmm. felt really like life-giving and, and natural. Awesome, I, I love that. And so with like creating in different genres, is your creative process or different, like what are the similarities and differences as you're approaching creating pop punk versus creating country? What does that look like? It's really similar actually, um, I think, you know, as a songwriter, I always do better when it's a session that's starting from scratch with a, an acoustic or, you know, even if we're writing on acoustic and the producer is developing or uh, producing the track as we go. That's like my favorite way of, of writing. Every once in a while, someone will have a track already done that I'll write on top of. But um, I feel like I'm at my best as a songwriter when it starts organically like that. Um, and as far as the lyrics, you know, what I've really tried to do is take the things that I've learned in country music, like telling a story, really taking the listener through the process of whatever the situation is, heartbreak, love, whatever, um, and applying it to pop punk, which I feel like sometimes can be a bit more about the melodies and about the guitars and the, the hooks than the lyrics. Um, and so it was always like my goal to, to make sure that I blend those two things. Um, and there's not any hint of country in any of my new stuff, but I think as a songwriter that like country music and like writing in Nashville was really helpful. Like expand on some of the topics that you find inspiration in. Are you, like some people have a million notes, are you like, I know people have like voice recordings, pages of like, where do you find that inspiration and how does that process begin for you? Yeah, I, I, I definitely have a lot of notes, um, a lot of titles and concepts. Um, I, I would say I'm more of a concept person, like I'll bring a concept into a session and I'll be like, I don't really know what the title is here, but here's what I want to say. Um, I'll also have melodies, um, a place that I get a lot of inspiration that random things pop into my head is a plane. I don't know why, but um, it's loud enough to where I could like sing into my voice notes and no one can hear me or maybe they can and I'm crazy. <laughs> but uh, a lot of the inspiration is just is from stuff I've gone through. Um, I find it, it's weird. I, I find it easier to write about heartbreak. Maybe that's not weird. Maybe that's common. Um, but those, I feel like those moments in time of, of heartbreak are so visceral and you can take yourself back there so easily that like writing about it is, is easier. Whereas if you're in love and you're in a happy place, it's really hard to put into words why that is, you know? So um, I try and there's some, some, some love songs on the new record that I'm proud of, but a lot of it is about heartbreak. <laughs> those are my, my favorite kind of songs. Save, honestly, so. save. <laughs> love, love some good sad music. Even yeah. though I'm happy, I'm like, I swear I'm happy, but it, it just hits the soul okay. different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So on the creative side, um, I think music is, I mean, the creative is important, but also the business side is very important. And mm -hmm. we have a series called Sound Advice where we have creators share advice for other creators. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about some advice you would give to a musician who is maybe struggling to manage the business side or struggling to monetize some things that they can do to um, kind of help push that process forward or just improve on that aspect? Sure. I mean, I think putting putting worth on your music is so important. What I think we all fall into, and it's such a trap, is just thinking that, um, you know, we should just we should just be grateful for the opportunity to get our music in front of people. And while that's true, I think it really starts with us with what people 
pay us and what people think is it, what you're worth. And if we're thinking we're worth nothing, then we're gonna get nothing, you know? Um, and my my biggest piece of advice is to, to educate yourself. You know, I wish I had educated myself on the business side of things at a, at a much younger age, because from a very young age, I was managed by people. I got a record deal. Um, my first record deal, I was 15. So I felt like I didn't even have time to like learn about anything. And at the time, it was just the information wasn't at as at your fingertips as it is now. So that's a huge piece of advice is like, make sure you know what you're getting into. Make sure you learn about contracts and read it yourself before you just sign your life away. Um, but yeah, like, and, and, and building a team around you that you that you really trust. You know, I, I think um, you can definitely be deceived. It's not like a foolproof plan, but um, go with your gut. I think you know when somebody's right for you and the right manager, the right label rep, whatever, um, and just like follow your heart when it comes to that stuff. Can you talk a little bit about what fairness means to you in the music industry or areas that you, you would like to see the industry improve? Yeah, I mean, I think we can all say like streaming uh, is is a a huge way for us to get compensated, and it and the fact that it isn't delivering is really hard. Um, I mean, I, I so appreciate Sound Exchange and everything you all do to just make sure we're compensated when our music is used in places that we don't think about. Um, but yeah, I think streaming needs to needs to get better at compensating the artists, the songwriters everyone involved in creating the music. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just, I feel like it's it's ever changing. There's always these new platforms. There's always these new ways of people um, reaching music and, and ingesting music and being able to curate their own playlists and all of that. It's amazing. And I love that music is so accessible, but we have to make sure that we change the the, the business side of it as well, because if we're not, we're, we're just gonna, always be playing catch up and it makes it really hard for artists to continue to make music when it's not we're not being paid back for all the money we put in i mean making music i mean i'm not someone who's really great at pro tools who can i'm not a phineas sitting in my room and i can make something sound great i need people i need to pay people to help me make things sound great so like not getting that back is is super difficult um so yeah we have a long way to go but you know you you're all doing great work so you make it a lot less terrible <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great and outside of the industry you're also very outspoken about just equity and equality in general recently speaking out against um, the new law in Tennessee um, that allows ordained um, individuals to reject marriages can you just talk about why speaking out is so important to you and what that means to you to use your platform yeah, I mean, I, I never, I wasn't always like this. Um, I think I got so used to um, being in a safe bubble and um, it was all about me and I, I just wanted to be successful and not rock the boat. Um, and then once I sort of, I, I think it was 2020 that put everything into perspective and everything, you know, obviously the George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement, everything sort of, that jump started me educating myself and learning more about everything, injustices on every level. And um, obviously when just so many things changed over the last few years since then that like, I, I don't know, it just, once you see things, you can't unsee them. Um, I also feel like I'm in a place as a musician where I want people to know where I stand. I want fans who are um, black, queer, and everything encompassing what it means to be inclusive feel safe at my shows. I want them to know that like I see them and I appreciate them and I'm going to protect them as much as I can. Um, and so. I I, I stopped thinking of the, the way of like, if you're a singer, or you're a musician, don't bring politics into it, don't bring your views into it, when that is quite literally why I do music. I have opinions, I have feelings, I have, uh, my, I have stances on things. And while I might not write a song called like, love is love or whatever, like I, I still stand for that. And um, I, it doesn't, I don't wanna keep it separated anymore, you know? So yeah, and then like ever since I started speaking out, it really has been crazy what's happened to my career. Um, I don't think you speak out in hopes for that to happen, but it's just like such a beautiful thing to like, I don't know, just see things expand without really meaning to. 
Um, so I've just been grateful to be encouraged to speak out. And the people that don't like it, like, I don't want them at my shows anyway. So it's <laughs> like when these people say they're unfollowing me or something, I'm like, great. <laughs> or like, okay, bye. bye. Yeah. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. I know. And they're saying that to me about country music. I'm like, I, okay, I'll let you have it. I'll let you have it. <laughs> I love that. I love that authenticity that comes through. Uh, and the music industry also can be a very male-dominated space. Can you give some advice that you would give to a woman in the music industry or just lessons that you've learned um, just navigating the industry as a woman? Yeah, um, be intentional with employing women. Um, I think it's really easy to look around and find a male manager, find um, a male label rep or whatever. And, I, and I, I understand that it is easy to do that, especially when you're in a rush and you just want to get the team together. But um, there are so many women in the industry that are doing amazing things and maybe they're just starting out, but but they ha their women are incredible and so are men, but um, especially the men that are like feminists themselves who help the cause and help lift us up. But I, I think it's so easy to just like go with what's in front of you. And when you really dig and you really look around, there's so many incredible women that are doing great work. I mean, w one of the main songwriters on my record is, is a woman, Ali Tamposi. Um, it, it's just, when you really think about the people that are making huge moves in the industry, so many women are at the center of it. Um, so my advice would just be also also to like collaborate with more women um, as a musician, you know, writing for other female artists, collaborating with other female artists, making sure that you know the features on my songs. I, I make sure that I'm I think hard, long and hard about that. Who who needs a platform? Who you know? Who would be fun to work with? Who would I want to tour with? And it's always like women that would be so fun so yeah I, I think like we're pinned against each other a lot of it is you know there's only enough room for a certain amount of us in a certain genre especially in country um and so you feel like you can't collaborate because it's like I'm giving a piece of my success away but it's like it just helps us all and it's and, and who doesn't love a female collaboration you know so that would be a long piece of advice I love that. That's great. I like that about it's like growing the pie instead of like, yeah. you know, everyone can eat. Yeah, um, totally. I think that's a great piece of advice. And for our last question for our sound advice series, you've given such great advice. But what is maybe one piece of advice that was like really bad that somebody gave you like the worst piece of advice and whether you followed it, whether you didn't follow it, but like what was a piece of advice that you look back and like that was just terrible advice? Mm, that's a really good question. I think when I was I was going through a bit of a tough time. I remember my first album came out when it was when I was country, and um, the first single did really well. The second single didn't do that great, and well, it was doing fine, but it was taking too long for the label's sake. And so they were like, "We're moving on from this record." I it really messed with me mentally, and it and it really sent me into a bit of a depression. And I came to them and was very open and honest and vulnerable of like, "This is this is really hard to just like." throw away these songs. I, I have some songs that I really wanted to make a video for and push to radio or just make it a focus track. And, um, and I, and it was sort of like, well, maybe you should just like take a sec and just like not, you know, we'll have you over here. You just, um, just sit there and come to us when you're ready. And I was like, wait, 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 no, I'm not saying I'm not ready. I'm just like sharing my feelings. And I think that that's like the worst piece of advice to give an artist is like, oh, you're feeling bad? Just sit there and we'll come back to you when you're, when you're better. It's like, no, I'm gonna, I should keep writing. I should keep creating. Maybe I share this with my fans. Maybe I'm open and honest. Maybe you could like help me through this and not just like throw me to the side. So yeah, I think that was, I think that was pretty bad. <laughs> Cause now, and I, I don't do that anymore. And I've written some of my favorite songs in those moments of, of pain, you know? Yeah. I think that's like when some of the most authentic stuff comes out and comes across in the music. Totally.